man. Y'all know what it is, man. It's the Wave God, TJ the Smooth Dude, man. Chilling with my guys over here, Smack Life TV. You see, I'm kind of smack. They got me smack. So, you know, watch up, learn up. Man, book is dropping. Show some love. <laughs>
Louisiana, North Carolina, uh, Atlanta at one point, Philly, Delaware, and now California. Mm -hmm. You don't hear Go Go. Like, it'll be a once in a blue moon where you'll hear Go Go on a, on a radio station outside the, out of his outside of the DMV, mm -hmm. uh, like when UCB Sexy Lady came out, it mm -hmm. was everywhere. Right, right. Uh, Rare Essence, when they covered Pieces of Me, mm -hmm. that was, you could hear that on a, I heard that on a radio station in New York while I was in New York, and I heard Rare Essence come on the uh, station. So um, it's, it's non-existent, but uh, I'm doing my part and my best to try to spread the culture and spread the love uh, spread the sound, spread the genre because I, I've been tweeting and talking about this for a couple of years that GoGo -Go is about to go national. If you if you are like paying close attention to GoGo, -Go, you see Snoop Dogg Snoop did, a, just did a jump. Did, did a jump with Red Essence. Yeah. Um, other artists like Scarface. I I know Scarface was literally at a what band show playing a guitar a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, like right before the not before the breakout, but like sometime last year, you had uh, who else? It's just a, a lot of people that's just doing and loving go go. You had Travis Scott using the EU, uh, doing the butt sample, yeah. and, he, and he even recorded himself like like recording and, and trying to make the beat and stuff like that. So go go is going to catch fire. So like I just hope y'all ready because it's coming. Yeah, what you think held it back so for so long? Um, lack of originality, um, that's first and foremost, like, if you don't have original music, one, you can't sell the music without getting it clear, and then when you get it clear, you're gonna have to pay for that, so, like, you're basically losing a lot of money, right. so, like, take it, take it like this, Biggie, when Biggie died, uh, Diddy made that song, uh, Missing You, mm -hmm. that's a Sting song, so, right. being the greedy person that Sting is, he took majority of that song, so they ain't really, and that was like a tribute to Biggie. So right, like, right. you would think somebody would be like, oh, you you know, I ain't gonna take that much, or yeah, you can yeah, have yeah. it, and Sting was like, nah, I don't we need all you. that. We need all <laughs> of that. So, you know, uh, originality, it needs to be more original. You have a lot of bands doing it now, mm -hmm. and, and being, like a lot of bands can't put a lot of their music on Apple Music and right. like think about all the songs and all the and things that play that all the CDs and different seven sixteen oh three and and one two oh for all the, all these different dates that mm -hmm. if all that was original music think if they could put that on Apple Music Catalog right now would be crazy it's on Tidal on Spotify and all the other streaming services. Like, they would be making so much money right now. I'm talking millions and millions of dollars off yeah, streams. Yeah, because I'm just been cranking since. You know what exactly. I'm so, you know what I'm saying? That's what held us back because they, they're literally leaving millions of dollars. But like I said, I see bands doing it now, coming out with original music, putting it on uh, Apple Music, True Expressions. They just came out with a new joint called Hellcat. Um, so like that's a, a a trendy thing, you know. All all the dudes want to buy a Hellcat and all that yeah, good shit. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying. And they made a song about it. You get what I'm saying? And, and it cranks. So like I be streaming it all day, every day. So like yeah. you know, just make original music, but also a lack of uh, being humble and and promotion. Like being somebody who's started out passing out a flyer to like basically owning an empire, like I don't know how many bands lacked on promotion, like when it was a show, when it was their show, when it was just somebody else's show. And then, you know, they expected like an extramonal, I can't even say the word, just so much money that they can't even, you know what I'm saying, find the actual reason why they ex actually deserve that money. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. any band like, with not every promoter but with me I never needed a specific band to pack a show I could pack a show with TCB Reaction TOB high quality band XIB it, it didn't matter I can pack a show with anybody just because of my eth my work ethic me being in the streets every night making sure I'm passing out flies me 
being at the schools passing out flies or having my team when I got older, having my team go to the schools and pass out flies. Like I was just on it every day and I, I knew promotion was the key to actually making money and to doing the numbers that we were doing. Like if you think about it, a, a Fortune 500 company, they'll sell you a product like an iPhone, but they'll spend, they'll spend way more money to market it than it costs to make it. Because marketing is how you get people to actually buy your product. Like you can have a product, it's so many different phones, but why do every why does everybody have an iPhone? Because of the marketing, because of how the branding and, and how they do that. So like just if we had better branding, which like a lot of bands are doing now, and uh, just better promotion then I think we would have got there. So marketing, branding, and then originality on music, I think that's what held us back. But I think a lot of bands are coming out of their shell now. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be marvelous. Like Davey Ruffin <laughs> said, marvelous. Yeah. So what was your go first go-go experience? Like the first go-go you went to? First go-go, it was a UCB show. It's probably a little bit before y'all time. Um, this was in the 90s, 99. Yeah, it was 99. And I don't remember where exactly it was, but my cousin, I mean, my sister's stepbrother had a, uh, had a hookup with UCB because they lived uptown right on Upshaw and then they, he just knew everybody. So, yeah. man, they, he, he brought me along and I was, what, 99? I was only 12. Yeah. So I was like, geek. And man, like I fell in love with, UCB is my all time favorite band and I fell in love with them as soon as the first time I heard Rock Mikey. And, and Mikey was like, Mikey, Mikey. And they actually, it sounded like a kind of like a rap song with a, a go-go song cause he was rapping over the go-go beat. So man, 99 was my first experience. I was 12 years old and it was UCB and they cranked the hell out of that jump. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, where did you see come from Go-Go so far? Like, the people that was in bands that transitioned to maybe rap or acting or whatever? Um, I'm trying to think of a lot of people. 3 Black, he used to play for high quality. He one of the hottest rappers in the game right now. Yeah. Doing songs with Moneybag Yo and got Man, I can't even tell you because I'm on his close friends on Instagram. So he be, I be seeing all the little stuff he be doing, who he been in the studio with. So I can't even really say, but except for the stuff that's already out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a lot of big names coming on, soon. on, on some uh, records. Uh, who else? Uh, big G, obviously. Yeah. You know, big G, you know, I call myself the Prince of DC. And who else is the king? Obviously, Big G. Uh, and man, he he's done so much for the culture, the community, just everything. And, and that's why I try to follow in his footsteps and try to do my part in, in keeping the culture alive. And that's why I'm so heavy on Bounce Beat. And like, I got the Bounce Beat documentary coming out. Uh, it's gonna be telling you how Bounce Beat got started, how everything got started, you know, who was cranking, who was slumming, who was doing their thing, who was making money who was the Kings, TCB obviously, rest in peace Polo, uh, and, and who was, you know what I'm saying, the rising young stars, man. So we got a lot of people that we've interviewed. We've been working on that for like hmm, a couple years now, me and myself and Dusty are true expressions. So uh, yeah, man, uh, Killer Cow, Killer Cow, Rare Sense used to be with but What Band, and he's been doing his thing, he like, He's been doing his thing. Um, albums, streaming numbers are, are doing really well. Um, you see him in the paper all the time. He's with different, just a bunch of different people that I, I, I grow, I've grown to respect. So, man, that's a lot of people. I can, I can keep naming like the young kid, the young top dollar. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Being around XIB, he he wasn't in XIB, but he was around XIB. Uh, shout out to Mikey, man. Mikey was the Mikey was was one of the goats, man. So. Yeah. Man, when the, when you say the bounce beat touch line? Bounce beat was late '03, early '04. 
I don't know, it's in between that period and then it's just a lot of discrepancies, you know what I'm saying, with who made it and all that stuff. But, right, right. Um, we're going to tell you everything in the Bounce Beat documentary. Yeah, uh, that's probably really what you already know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, man. Started like oh, late oh three, literally super late, like December oh three to oh four. Okay. And what you see transformed from like just hitting the pockets and sockets to going ahead? Because the bounce beat used to be fast as a mug. Like when T.O.B. was cranking the bounce beat, the jump was, you had to be in shape to real life go party with them niggas. Man, and, and, and that's what I think like changed the energy. Like it just got more youthful. Uh, you know, it went from Congos and, you know, I don't know if it was Rare Essence popularizing the Timbales and mm -hmm. the Rotatoms, but I think it was, you know, with the Work the Walls. Um, and then you had Backyard take it over and, you know, they the kings of the, of the Timbales with the breakdowns and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Can't nobody hit a breakdown better than them. Um, and then that transitioned into Bounce Beat. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you have three eras where you got the Congo era, the breakdown era, and then the bounce beat era. Three different eras, and I think it just materialized by the growth of the sound, the, the younger the people who were coming in, and the faster, like you said, T.O.B. was like fast with that bounce beat, but the sound had to pick up because everybody was getting a lot younger so they wanted mm. to hear a little faster a little more tempo more to dance to because of course you can dance to congos but it ain't nothing like dancing to a breakdown or a bounce beat yeah yeah no question so who you top let's say 10 bangs top 10 yeah. uh tcb mm -hmm. top 10 all of all time yeah 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 uh so you got chuck brown obviously yeah, yeah, number I'm so one so so uh, RE is number two. Backyard is number three. I'm gonna have to put TCB number four because they changed the a whole era. Yeah. Uh, like they literally every band that's playing now plays what they play. So, um, I'll go with. I've been having trouble so trouble with this next pick so matter of fact no tcb is not number four tcb is number five eu is number four okay tcb number five junk number six trouble funk number seven northeast number eight oh, ucb number nine my favorite band of all time so you see I'm not biased. I yeah, put them yeah, number yeah. I can't put them in front of, you know, everybody else. And then number number ten. I might have to go raw image, man. Yeah. No, Lil Benny. Lil Benny. Lil Benny. Right. I go with Lil Benny. So what you think was the most lit spot? Well name a list of them joints, the most lit go goes back in the day. Uh it's that's like a lot. I can give you a list of promoters who was doing their thing uh -huh. and, and, and packing them shows. So uh, you got Team Major, made Team Major, Major Money. It's kind of like the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, Crazy Weird. Uh, you got Yellow House. Uh, who else? Reggie Promo, obviously. My old partner, that's my good man. Uh, who else? Doof, doof, doof. Uh, Big Vic, everybody know Big Vic, one of the goats. Uh, Big Butch. Uh, who else? Rated R, rest in peace, Uncle D, man. I miss, that's that's who gave me my shot and who got me in promotion, man. And he was definitely doing his thing, man. I started promoting at the Onyx, but Uncle D wrote it in my book. If, if y'all want to read it, um, but yeah, man, Uncle D was a, was a good one. Ready Rob. My, my good man, that's another person I grew with. Um, man, it was, a, it was a few of them, and then a lot of the the, 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 the spats. Literally, I, I just rolled down Central Avenue. I just rolled past the Old Pearl. Yeah. We're on Richie Road right now, and so Club Sweezy over there somewhere. 
up the street. If you go all the way up Ritchie Road, boom, you gonna hit the CFE and the yeah. Forsville VFW. Uh -huh. These all places I've done shows at. Um, over it's literally one up the street. I can't remember the name of the XIB used to play, and it's not Club Sweezy. It's, it's another name, but man, that jump, man, it's just so many jumps. You got the DC Star, DC Tunnel, uh, Ibiza, Icon. Uh, man, G's, uh, B Palace. Damn, man. Brian Manor. Brian Manor. God damn. I can't even think right now. And I've literally made a shirt with all them jumps. Uh, Teen Cafe, uh, The Laugh Out Loud, the My yeah. Brother's Place, Tasifu, uh, Icon. Uh, man, these are all places I, I done did shows and, and, and love TV, uh, the Boom Boom Room, Club 1919, Levels, uh, Safari Steakhouse. Man, I used to run my brother's place, man. They are, man. Not a lot of promoters could bring people out the world off to do go go. Right? I was telling niggas early joint. I went to most most of them joints had your name on it. That's how I got introduced to you for real. Yeah, man. So you know, I've just been blessed. God bless me, and you know, what I'm saying I just try to put the hard work in, man. But live, like I'll say, like except for like levels and Club 1919 and Boom Boom Room, every other show, every other club I've named, I impacted it some way, shape, or form. So man, I've been around, and it's even way more clubs yeah so man if y'all missed it man i had to eat all homage that if you don't eat you die in the street i had to collab the bounce beat eat and eat tea uh they had I've every that, yeah it had every go-go club every bounce beat club uh effort so you had everything from martinis to the mad chef you get what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we went way back so man y'all missed out but we got another collab coming soon me and malik got y'all uh with some good shit coming up soon so y'all stay tuned for that yeah all right so how can they get your book um amazon amazon.com search teach smooth dude that's t-e-e-j smooth dude uh it's up there uh man you got a lot of different levels you got a lot of different stories you got a lot of different things in there from go-go to you know me helping make dmv rap hot to running the biggest club on the east coast like at ibiza and we're doing 1500 people a night yeah like just different stuff i'm talking about 1500 people you talk about no artists so at one point Top Dollar Sweezy was the hottest rapper in the city, if you don't know. And partly, well, majority, my man Mikey. Mikey was crazy with the, the promo. Like, you, he promoted him like, like a go-go. Like, he promoted him. So you had big-ass flyers on your windshield. Like, you like, it's be like this fucking big. And yeah. Be like, how? And it'd be Top Dollar on it. And, you know, uh, that all started at Crystals. Um, Crystals was my baby that I had all to myself because- The skating ring? Yeah, the skating ring. Uh, back in, the, back in what, 2011, maybe 12, I don't, I, it may be 2012, but uh, I know it's the summertime. Uh, the skating ring, they were doing like 50 people every Saturday. So they was looking to uh, bring up the numbers. So back then, if you don't know what the print shop is, you're not a promoter in the DMV or, you, or you're very new because the print shop is where everybody went. Every promoter, every, like you had business people because everybody went to Chris to get their flies at Create DC. So shout out to Chris, man. Chris, Chris, is good people. Uh, the manager at the skating rink, she was asking, did, it, did, did she came in there asking my man Jono, who does the fly? Shout out to Jono. Uh, she came in there asking, did she know, did he know anybody 
that can bring numbers to her Saturdays, her team nights. Me being the top promoter of Go-Go's already because I had the Icon pop in, CFE, I was hosting all the CFEs, the Onyxes, the Thai Seafoods, I was playing in New Vision, so I played in the Go-Go band, one of the top Go-Go bands. New Vision was my jump, bro. Man. Oh, man. Y'all man. Listen punch, to 3508. Three, I mean, three fifteen oh eight. I'm on. That's the only CD I'm on. But I'm on. I'm on through the whole CD. Yeah. Cause I only. I was only with them for like a couple months. Cause I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to make money. They really weren't making money. You know what I'm saying? So I had to do that. But back to the crystals thing. Me and her came up with an agreement, and I told her I can bring her a thousand people. She now granted she's doing fifty people. Mm -hmm. She didn't believe. Nah, nah. No, she just didn't believe that I would be able to bring that amount of people out because she, you know, she had other promoters try and all that stuff, and they all kind of failed. Right. No disrespect to them, respectfully. Uh, so I booked Tob just to host. Like they didn't play. I didn't get a sound man or anything like that, and I made sure that people knew that they were hosting. We did twelve hundred people. So, and they just came to skate and all that stuff. So as soon as that happened, I told her at the end of the night that I agreed to not take any money that show if I got 50% every show after that. after that. So once that happened, man, I booked T.O.B. the second time. Boom, a thousand people. Then I booked Top Dollar and XIB. And I did 600 people. Uh, yeah, I was doing, at first I was doing go-go bands, but then they, they wanted me to stop doing go-go bands. And I just had to strictly rely on DMV artists. And no DMV artists had a real crowd at the time. Right. So I had to get with my youngest. Boss. DMV artists ain't really have a, a... Yeah, they didn't really have a following. Like, that they have now, so uh, I relied on, on my promoters to actually pick and choose who was hot and who could possibly bring a crowd. So um, he started picking artists. He picked the Top Dollar. And, uh, well, I picked Top Dollar because I already knew him from the Go Go. So the it was the first show, the first like full rap show, Top Dollar, P Wild, Slutty Boys, and Fast X that played with UEB, he was a rapper. Uh, we did like over 800 people. So I already knew that if I just follow that formula and listen to my promoters, Mark and, and Go Go Brit, I was going to succeed. So then, boom, they started choosing Shaq Lizzy, Fat Trail, Light Show, Slutty Boys, uh, Breezy Supreme. Uh, oh, man. Like, we got so hot and we was doing like a thousand people uh, every every Saturday that I had it, like, it just got so crazy that, like, we ended up booking Chief Keef, too. For real? So I brought, I was, like, the first to bring Chief Keef to the city, even though he double booked, because I think he was at Love later that night. Um, so, like, I, we really, like, had a, like, a huge impact on the DMV rap scene, in my opinion, just because, like, we were given, like all the people that were there used to come to my go go. So all the people that were there were going to the Brian Man and going to the CFE, going to the La Pearl and going to all the go go's. And then I just had them come to the Crystals. And then it was a little bit easier. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a little trick and a little hint of how it was super successful because it was right across the street from Naylor Road. Uh, the station. station. Yeah. So with kids, it's easy access. So that's that's a part of the reason why uh, it was successful. But at the end of the day, other promoters had it and couldn't succeed. It. And I, I did. So uh, yeah, man. I think we had a, a huge impact on the DMV uh, rap scene. I remember them Christmas days, bro. When when that shit was flooded, bro. Man. At one point, man, the cut line was longer than the regular line. Like it, it was literally like go, -go like a go-go. Yeah. 
man, that man, I show you pictures and videos and stuff like that, man. We done broke so many artists, put so many artists in front of the, in, in front of the thousands of people. Like a lot of a lot of artists first show in front of a thousand people with them head actually headlining or being uh, one of the top artists on the show came from Christmas, like. I don't think Fetro had a show where he headlined and did a thought, and it was no like super undercard, like where it was like Fetro and then you had a whole it bunch of A list like rappers. It was like Fetro and like, two like, roles, like my man Smooth and, and, and so that played for heavy okay. impact. And you know, just you know, people that you know I, I bang with but may have not necessarily had as big of a crowd. So. Putting them in front of a thousand people, I, I would say like I was the first to do that for just strictly them headlining and having no super undercards. Like a lot of them, I'm talking Shy, Fat Trail, uh, Light Show, Slutty Boys, Lil Reza, Top Dollar, Man, Three O Black. Uh, Three O Black literally started rapping at Crystal's, like. He was hosting my shows at Christmas. He was on my team, on my promotion team and everything. He used to hang with me all the time. And, and he got inspired to rap because he seen everybody at Christmas doing their thing, like being stars and all that. He was like, I want to be a star. And I was like, go for it. Because I already knew he was a star. Like, Black is one of them people. Like, he come in the room, he going to take over the room just because he got that kind of personality. So he was perfect for it. And now he's flourishing. Uh, Shy is flourishing. Trails, well, free trail. Free but, trail. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody's like doing their thing and getting money, and I'm just proud of them. I just hope they take the violence out of, it, out of a lot of their music. And you know, you know, like Shy Glizzy, he just did, he gave $10,000 to uh, get fresh foods. I forgot the, 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 the name of the uh, actual, the actual company, but. Cause I used to work with them too, but uh, he just gave ten thousand to help with, with COVID. You know what I'm saying? That's the more yeah. positive things that we need from the headline and the A-list rappers and stuff like that. See, that's some beautiful like yeah. things that we need to show like the young rappers. Cause you see, DC is like crazy, Maryland yeah, yeah, yeah. included, with this people getting shot and all them. Like it's just crazy. So you know what I'm saying? We just need more of a better influence from all the all the street rappers. And you know what I'm saying? Y'all got y'all got some money now, so. You know, clean it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying, inspire the youth, keep doing y'all thing, man. I'm proud of all the DMP rappers. Man, shout out to Q, Lil Cousin, that's my little cousin. I literally raised him when he was like eight, seven, eight years old. That's my best friend's little cousin, and he used to come over, and we used to take them everywhere and all that stuff, man. Shout out to Hamid, uh, Chaz French, man, Chaz is doing his thing, signed to Motown. Uh, Eddie Vance, man, I like I Am Northeast, man, I just heard one of his tracks, he sound, he sound dope. Uh, JG Riff, I like him, Slim, I like him, he, he, I like God, so man, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of all the DMV rappers, man, but let, let's clean up the, 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 the violence and everything, and just make it a little more positive, that's it, man, but y'all keep doing y'all thing, y'all, y'all shining, y'all winning, y'all about to break the mold, because I know it's hard for, DMV to like really prosper and really do what they need to do. I mean, not do what they need to do, but really get the shine that they deserve because y'all deserve y'all shine, so we'll figure it out. The Mix Up Show started in 2015. Interview Waka Flocka, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Monica. I hate to say it, but Tory Lanez, before all this happened, but we don't rock with him now. Uh, who else? Kevin Gates. Uh, like I've been around the block. Like after DMV, like when we were really popping, man. And Bliss FM, shout out to Germs. Uh, everybody in DMV came through. So you had G, Big G, Trey the Mayor, Tony Lewis, like all the real heavy hitters in DC. Like they came through. You know what I'm saying? We've been interviewed all of them. So. Y'all can go to the Mix Up Show on Instagram, uh, M I X X U P S H O W. You'll see everything. Uh, like we've been around the block for a while, so uh, 
right now, uh, Malik and I are about to bring it back. Uh, we we had to postpone it just because I moved out to Cali and doing all that. But now we're about to start a lot uh, interviews on IG and stuff like that. Trying to get Rick Ross uh, right now, the real Rick Ross. Uh, Free Ray Ricky. Yeah, the real Rick Ross. That's my OG, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I always chop it up with him. Uh, he used to come down Stizzy where I work at uh, the weed jump, where I grow weed and stuff like that. So uh, he used to always come through. So uh, I'm trying to get him. Uh, my mom's gonna hook me up with DMX to do an IG interview with him. And then all the DMV artists that we have, I'm about to start getting them. So the Mix Up Show coming back real soon. Hey, hey. Uh, so uh, I don't know how, I, I guess I was blessed and lucky to become part owner of a, a legal cannabis company. Um, but what happened was I had to humble myself because I've been like the top promoter and all this stuff and running marketing for DTLR and all that kind of stuff. And I had to humble myself to actually learn how to grow weed and learn the ins and outs of the cannabis business. So what I basically did was I went, moved to LA, got a job at a cannabis cultivation facility and learned how to grow weed. And, Within, I would say, six months, I knew how to do everything. So with me doing that, uh, I leveraged my knowledge that I learned within that six months to get a percentage partnership with a cannabis company um, because the person that owns the company needed somebody that knew how to grow weed. So. What they do to, what a lot of people do to not pay you is they try to leverage uh, a percentage. And that's what we used to do in GoGo too, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey bro, I ain't even pay you, but I give a percentage of the show or something like that. Well, the cheap people, so I, I, I pay all my debts. I don't owe no band, nobody, nobody, no money. So, but uh, yeah, man, it, it just, God's blessed me, I would say. Uh, and being humble and and not being afraid to jump out there because, you know, I've been in, other than my high school years and moving around because of my mom and stuff like that, I've been in D.C., Maryland my whole life. So, like, moving out to California was, like, a huge step, and I've been out there for, like, a year and a half, and everything's been great, like, literally about to open the store back up out here. Um, yeah, man, I'm just doing a lot of different things, about to open a solar farm, uh, about to open a, a fresh food farm uh, with all organic foods. I got a couple acres uh, that I'm about to play with, and uh, yeah, man, I just I'm just working, man. Uh, Y'all know what it is, man. Forever for Delhi. Shout out to my guy, man, hooking your boy up with some exclusive. I can't even show y'all. This ain't even come out yet, but he hooked me up. Shout out. Wave God, TJ Smooth Dude, Smack Light TV, you did.